Okay, for the problems we've done so far, for a problem like this where it asks us to find the derivative of the inverse and then put a value in it, we found the inverse algebraically, took the derivative, and plugged in the value. Unfortunately, we're going to run into a problem on this one, and the reason why is because if we try and do that algebraically on this, I would have y equals this function, I would switch x and y, and now we get two y's over here, and then I, we don't know how to solve for that if there's two variables. So we can't actually solve for something and get y by itself. So because of that, we, we can't do this problem the same as we've done the other ones. In this case, we have to go back and use this rule that we talked about earlier. Now, we have to know some information about inverses in order to do this. We're actually going to do this problem all numerically, so we're actually not going to find the inverse function at all. We're all going to just work with, uh, just use numbers only. Let's look at what they're asking us here. It says that f of 2 was given as 0. So you put 2 into here for x, you get 0 as a result. Let's think about what we talked about earlier for inverses. When we had that graph on the board in a previous video, the graph says that your x and the y values are switched. So we can find two places on the original one and in the inverse, and they're switched. That's the same thing you do when you solve for algebraically. So what I can say here, is the inverse, if I put a 0 in for the inverse, I should get 2 as the y value. So again, the x and the y values are, are switched here. We're putting the 0 in, we get a 2 as a result. This is actually really important, and this is going to allow you to solve for this problem. If I know what this value is, now I can come over here and I can use this formula. And since my x value is 0, we can put a 0 in for this one and we can put a zero in for this one. So it doesn't have to be just regular x, you can put uh, numbers in there for each one and we have that for this particular problem. So, now that we have that, we can actually plug in information directly into here. What is this saying? It's saying take the derivative of the original function, which we have, and we can do that easily, and then put this value in. We have the inverse, evaluated at 0 is going to be 2. So I'm going to take out all this and replace it with 2. So now when we get down to here, that's saying that I can do take the derivative and we're going to plug a 2 in to that one. Okay, so again, where did the 2 come from? The inverse, evaluated at 0, we found that out earlier. So all we have to do is just figure out what the derivative is, put 0 in it, plug that in down here, we'll have our answer. Let's do the, der the derivative of the original one. Okay, so f prime of x is going to be 3 comes down, or 2 comes down, multiplied by 3, and you get 6x, and then minus 7, derivative of 2 goes away. I want to find f prime of 2. Okay, so 6 times 2 minus 7, 12 minus 7 is 5. So, what that means is I can just put a 5 in for this, since I just solved for it, therefore, this is the answer to the entire problem. So notice, I was able to do the whole problem without even knowing what the inverse function actually is. I was able to do it just by using this fact here. They gave us these points, and I can switch those because that's the characteristic whenever you have the original one and the inverse, the x and the y's are always switched.